Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to continue our discussion on missing values. And the reason we are doing that is because we want to have a closer look at missing values. You learn something that you've not learned in the previous video. And that's so very important that we needed to create this video for sure. This may be a relatively shorter video, but the kind of learnings that you'll get from this video would be immense. So stay put and watch this video till end because you're going to learn something new. What do we need to have a closer look at missing values? Well, the first ingredient is that we need a really messed up data. And how could that look like? Maybe something like this. So we have limited rows. This is a very simple data frame. We have only 10 rows here and we have features like age, new role, team size, rating, sales one and sales two. Messed up in the sense that it has special characters like hyphens, add the rates and hash symbols. It has question marks. It has null written in a weird way of combination of upper and lower case. It is null written in two other ways. It has not applicable or NA. It has a blank cell and a combination of NANs, which is not a number. And again, weird combinations where you have the lower case and upper cases and all lower cases, everything mixed up. Now, why we are talking about this example today is because some of these entries are recognized by Pandas as missing to begin with, while some other entries here will have to be told to Pandas that these are not the intended values. For example, in the column called age, it does not make sense for us to have hyphens and add the rates. So how do we tell Pandas in Python that these are to be converted to missing values? That's one learning. Second learning is how do we know what of all these entries are already recognized as missing values? So note that not only the blank cells are called missing values. Some of these entries that you see here are very well recognized by a Pandas data frame as missing entries. We're going to have a much closer look at it and you'll be pretty much sorted by the end of this video. Let's get started. All right, so we are already at Google Collaboratory and we've already pointed to the data source, which is data with garbage. That's the name I could think of, so that's how I've called it. This is the very messed up data that I showed you. So we are starting by importing the necessary libraries. Since we don't intend to do any visualization, we are only calling NumPy and Pandas right now. Then we are reading this data using Pandas read CSV method. And this is the name of the data set. So this is our data frame object. And we can check what's the nature of these variables. That's another learning. Let's see how Pandas would read these objects. So you know this is a snapshot of our actual data. And let's see how Pandas is reading these columns. First of all, the column called age. You can imagine age would typically be a number. But because of these entries, these garbage entries here, like hyphen, add the rate, and hash, Pandas begins to call this as object. And it says there is no non-null entry. So we have 10 rows, and it's saying there are 10 non-null entries, which means, as per Pandas, this column is totally occupied. It does not have missing values. This is the case I was talking about that we'll have to tell Pandas that, listen, these are not the kind of entries that we wanted. So recognize them as missing values. We'll do that shortly. Then the column called new role. Again, Pandas says it has no non-null entries because we have 10 rows and it has 10 non-null entries. It again calls it an object. So this question mark, this null, which is written in a somewhat weird way, first two alphabets in lowercase and last two alphabets in uppercase is not the way you would write it. But you know, when we mess up things, anything could happen. So this is how it is. Let's look at the third column. It says team size has seven non-null entries. So for the first time here, Pandas is recognizing that there are some missing values. How many? Three values are missing and seven values are present. Notice this is how the original data was. So you had a null written in all lowercase. You had an NA or not applicable written and you had a blank cell. And Pandas is recognizing all these as missing entries to begin with. I'll print the data frame in some time to show you that. But notice this null written this way, this NA written this way and blank cell are the same for Pandas. It's recognizing them as missing values. On the other hand, this null written here in a messed up way is not recognized as a missing value. That's why it says it has no missing value here. Let's look at the next column, which is rating. So rating has the null written in all uppercase. And Pandas object says it has nine non-null entries, which means it says there are nine values present and one value missing. So this null, all uppercase null, is also recognized by Pandas as a missing value. Let's move to the next column, which is sales one. Now in sales one, Panda says there are nine non-null objects, which means one of these three has been recognized as missing, like this messed up NAN, this NAN the proper way, not a number, and these three hashes. 
I assume you can easily guess which one Paras would have recognized as an actual missing value, this NAN. If we mess it up further and write it in an unconventional way, Paras would not recognize as a missing entry, would rather treat it as a string, and hence the column is read as an object. Similarly, these three hashes, of course, we are clear, special characters are not recognized by Paras as missing. So it's saying that it's an object type column again. This NAN is recognized as missing. Now let's move to the next column. And there's a twist here. You have the same information here, except for one or two changes. First is that you have the numbers written properly here in a float format, and you have the conventional way of representing a currency here. So we'll see to it how Pandas reacts to this. But one more difference between sales one and sales two is that you had a NAN written here in a weird way, and you have a NAN written here in all lowercase. And Panda says, there are eight non-null objects. So in this case, this all lowercase NAN is acceptable to Pandas as missing value. This NAN, the proper way, not a number, this is a conventional way of writing it, is accepted as a missing value. These three hashes are not recognized as missing values. And that's why it says out of 10 places, there are two missing entries, this NAN and this NAN, and this is occupied and it's calling it an object. And it's not calling it an object just because of this cell. It's calling it an object because of the presence of these commas as well. So we'll deal with it in some time. So you get an idea that when we have a messed up data like this, some of these entries are recognized by pandas as missing, like NA null, this null, this NAN, this NAN. These are recognized as missing. We don't have to put any additional effort for this. But there are other entries like special characters or some messed up strings, which try to represent the same information like null, but it's not written the conventional way. Pandas is not able to recognize them as missing values. And that's where it says this data type seems to be an object type. Now let's see how do we go about fixing these issues. First of all, let me print the actual data frame. And since this is a very small data frame, I can do a comparison here between the actual appearance in the CSV file and the way it is. We can go column by column as stated earlier. All the garbage entries would not be recognized as missing. The messed up null is not recognized as missing. The question mark, of course, is not recognized as missing. But the third column where you had the lowercase null, this NA and this empty cell, these are all recognized as NAN by Pankas. Coming to the fourth column, which is rating, this uppercase null is converted to NAN by Pandas without us putting any additional effort. However, this NAN in sales one, which is a little messed up, is not recognized as missing by Pandas. This NAN, however, which is written in a proper way, is of course recognized as missing. And likewise, in the column called sales two, this NAN, which is all lowercase NAN, is recognized by Pandas as a missing entry. And this NAN, of course, is recognized as missing again. And this is a garbage entry. So let's see how we go about fixing these one by one. Let's take the first two column, age and new role. First thing is, on the age column, we are going to perform certain changes. We are doing a dot replace method where we can pass a list of special characters that we want to replace with a NAN. So this hyphen, these two add the rate symbols, and this one hash, we are saying all these to be replaced with np.nan, which is a way to represent the missing values. And notice when you do this, doing this much alone would make these entries disappear and you will see NANs, but it would not change the data type. So this is a very important point. When you just do a replace, it does not really assert any change in the data type. You might be wondering that if I remove these hyphens, hashes, and uh, special characters, it should automatically recognize it as a number, but that's not how it is. You'll have to explicitly do a type casting. This is called a type casting. We are saying as type float. So we'll force it to become a float. So is the case with this column called new role, where we have this question mark and this null written in an unusual way. We are saying both of these should be replaced with NAN. And we have again typecasting because if we don't typecast, it will continue to maintain this column as an object. Let's run this. And let's see if the changes are effective. You can see all these entries in the first two columns have become NANs. And how is the data type now? So remember these two columns were seen as objects earlier. We saw that here, first two columns were read as objects. How would these be seen now? You can see these are now seen as floats because we've not only just converted to proper missing values, we've also converted them to float data type. The column team size and ratings were already sorted, so we don't have to do any changes here. We are moving to the column called sales one. And in sales one, we are again doing the same thing. We are taking this NAN, the unusual NAN, and these three hashes, 
and converting them to np.nan and converting it to float. So this pretty much works. Now we have NANs here. We can check the info again. This column would be properly recognized as a column which is supposed to be a float type. Now there is something special about the last sales column here because it has commas as well in the entries. And when you have commas in the way you represent currencies, those are seen as strings by pandas in Python. So we'll have to do something about it. If I straight away go ahead and run the same kind of code and replace these three hashes, because in this column, I only have a problem with these three hashes. Everything else is already recognized as NAN. So if I just convert these three hashes to np.nan, it would not work. Why? See, it'll give an error. It gives an error. It says, could not convert the string to float this one comma 50 comma thousand that's written here, 150,000 that's written here is not read properly. Is something that Pandas believes is a string and it cannot convert a string to a float directly. So what should we do? There's a slight change in the syntax that we'll have to apply. We'll have to write, first replace these commas in the string to a blank. This is not a space, this is a blank character. There's nothing in between. And then we are saying, apply this replacement where you say these three hashes to be replaced with NANs and then type cast it to a float. So when we do that, why? Because we first converted what used to make Pandas believe that this is a string to a blank character. We removed it completely. Then we perform the change, which is necessary to be able to convert the garbage entries to a missing value. And finally, we have to do a typecasting because without typecasting, Pandas would not recognize the data type as float. Now we are checking the data frame. And now all the entries, if you see in this data, are recognized as NANs and our, all our data types are also properly recognized. Now, if you've understood what we have done here, the part of the video that we posted earlier would help you a great deal now because we've covered at length from very basic to the advanced methods, from the methods available in Pandas to the imputers available in scikit-learn and including the KNN iterative imputer in the earlier part of the video. So this video put together with the previous one completes, and I hope you get more clarity on how to deal with missing values in somewhat complex scenarios. Hope this helps. Thank you.